Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimme Camper. Today we're going to go over our upgrades we've done to the suspension on the camper because it was like way underbuilt to start with. So we got a lot of stuff coming at you from new wheels, new tires, new axles, new springs. All that stuff's changed and we're going to go over with you why we did it and how we did it right after this. So today we're going to go over some major suspension upgrades that we recently did on the camper. I had actually ran into some 16 inch wheels and some 5200 pound axles that were used and I just got a hold of those and I was eventually going to do this project anyway. But when we were down in New Orleans over New Year's, we did have a blowout with one of our Goodyear endurance tires. And I thought, well, rather than putting a couple hundred dollars back into that tire to replace that, let's just go ahead and let's just make these changes. Let's get this big boy fixed right and we'll just take it from there. So for the most part, we've really enjoyed our Cougar 2019-29 RKS. But for us, we've just been plagued with suspension problems. When you first look at it, it just appears that there's plenty of clearance until you actually get down under the camper because you see the, the fender wells here. It just looks like you're gonna have a lot till you get down in there. And truthfully, from the factory, there's only about 1.5 inches of clearance between the tires and the bottom of the camper. So we first noticed this issue on our way back from Huntsville, Alabama, after we went to the Space and Rocket Center. We have a video about that. It's a pretty nice place to go if you're interested in that kind of stuff. They have an on-site campground there. I put a video up here about that. But when we got back, I noticed a piece of wire loom sticking out from under the fender here over the tire which caused me major concern, obviously. So I actually had the rig towed to Camping World in Chattanooga, who actually lost my camper. That's right, I was in there. I was waiting on them to bring my camper up for like 45 minutes, and they never showed up. So finally I went back up there because they told me to wait at this uh, staging area. And I was like, what's going on with my camper? And they were like, um, they didn't want to say they couldn't find it, but they finally said they couldn't find it. You know, I had recently read on Facebook that there was some campers stolen there, so that made me pretty nervous. Come to find out they were actually looking for a travel trailer and not the fifth wheel. So they were able to find it after that told them it was a fifth wheel, but still. Now the fix that they did was the first in many suspension modifications that we've done, but they shortened the shackles, which they said should give us about an extra inch of clearance. The tech that I talked to there actually said that he wished they would do more, but Keystone wouldn't approve any more than that apparently. And so that's what we were kind of stuck with. I did have Camping World move that wire loom and all those wires that were over the tire over to the rail, because why on earth would you design something with wiring in less than a one inch clearance of space that does have bounce and move. I don't understand that at all. And I feel like that was very um, negligent on their part to do it that way, but that's the way that it was. So I did have a friend on one of my Facebook forums and he said that he moved the wire over to the rail. And I was like, well, great. So well, what all was in there? Cause I was thinking you're gonna have to splice the wires. You're gonna have to move everything over. And he was like, no, there's plenty of space there. Plenty of slack in the wire. All I did was literally like take it off of the bottom of the camper and move it over to the rail. So I really don't understand why it's not done that way at the factory if they had enough room to do it. But that's my soapbox. I'm getting off of it now and we'll uh, continue to the rest of the soapbox. Now about a year after that, I noticed that there was some rubbing going on again. I did weigh the rig at that point and it was 160 pounds overweight. Now also you got to remember that that was after I put those Goodyear Endurance tires on and they weighed quite a bit more than the factory tires. So I personally think that a decent amount of that 160 pounds was because of the weight of the tires, which would have nothing to do with the weight on the suspension. Um, but that's what I get told all the time. Well, oh, you must have had it overloaded. Well, if 160 pounds is going to cause that much disaster, then that's another problem in and of itself. Now on our last round of upgrades of the suspension, we did fabricate some one and three quarter inch lift blocks to put as a spacer between the axles. I have a video on that. Shelburne RV helped me with that. We're gonna put that link up here. My plan at that time was actually to use some Sumo Springs as well. The Sumo Springs, I actually got the ones that were overrated for the purpose that I have, and they were bigger, they squished down too far. We were gonna fabricate some brackets and stuff and kind of add those later, 
um, but we did some things different with this and we'll get there in a minute so I didn't actually end up using the Sumo Springs. Now that one and three quarter inch lift block it did help level out the camper quite a bit. It also helped some ground clearance issues that we had and obviously helped with the clearance between the tires and the bottom of the camper. This for the most part fixed all the issues but those 4400 pound axles were always an issue for me and I just always felt like the camper needed a little bit more suspension. My camper does weigh 10,400 pounds at its maximum capacity and you know I know that you have some tongue weight and they allow for that but really two 4,400 pound axles so it's 8,800 pounds so that's like 2,500 pounds of weight that the axles aren't rated for and my tongue weight is close to 2,000 pounds on my half ton towable RV so that's another issue in of itself when people are talking about well my half ton tow this I wouldn't personally pull this with a half ton truck because it does max out my my payload capacity my 2500 but I know people that do now personally if I were buying all the suspension the axles and everything new I probably would have went with 7500 pound axles but you know like I said I did run across these they were given to me and so this 5,200 pounds is way better than the uh, 4,400 pounds. And that leaves a lot less in that gap as far as the tongue weight as well as with the axles being able to handle them. So as far as the install goes, I tried to be prepared ahead of time. So I went ahead and bought the tires and had them mounted ahead of time. I wanted to really go overboard with the tire strength. So we decided to go with H rated Hercules 14 ply tires. Yes, 14 ply on my half ton towable trailer. Cause you really, I'm, you just can't be too strong of a tire on a trailer. And so, you know, with my recent issues with my Goodyear Endurance, and granted I should have listened to my, my TPMS a little bit better. We have a video about that. I'll link that up here if you're curious about it. But I'm just telling you that I would rather be safe than sorry. We're doing a whole lot of long trips this year and I would just rather rather be overboard with the security. Now I want to tell you that these tires are so stiff that it took 45 minutes for one of them with a team of two to three people to get on with a heavy duty machine because it got kind of stuck in the middle and it was it took them a long time and they were working at it and I got a little bit of footage of them working at it but down there at Village Tire in Cleveland Tennessee I got to give you guys a shout out because you did get those tires on for me and they've been working great. So after I got the tires mounted a couple weeks later I met up with old Steve over at Shelburne RV for the install of the axles. So just look at these two bad boys side by side. You got your 4400 pound axle here and your 5200 pound axle here. You know both of the axles and tires are a significant difference from one versus the other. There's one thing that we didn't think of when going from the 225 75 15 inch tires to the 235 80 16 inch tires and that was the diameter. The diameter of the tire went from 28.3 inches to 30.8 inches. And that obviously came into an issue when we was trying to get these mounted because that whole clearance between the tire and the camper thing. We hadn't actually planned on replacing the springs, but there wasn't hardly any clearance with these new tires being so much larger. Uh, There's about three eighths of an inch clearance and I didn't want to go through all that again. So we did kind of call things off for that day because we was met over there on a Saturday and was trying to get this knocked out. And Steve went and got me some new springs. We went from a four leaf spring set to a five leaf spring set. I also had Steve put on a wet bolt kit while he had it torn apart. I wasn't able to film the rest of the install as we had to wait for a little while for the springs to come in and I was at work so I wasn't able to go over and help with this project. Now I will say that I absolutely love these upgrades. The trailer's completely leveled out behind the truck now. The new leaf springs have really made a difference. Our trailer is 12 foot high from the factory. After the lift blocks and the other modifications that we did before, it was 12 foot four inches, and now it's 12 foot eight inches. We also have a lot more ground clearance under the trailer. I used to drag the tail from time to time. On like one of our first trips, it had one of those sewer hose mounts at the very back of the trailer. I tore that thing off on like day two. There's still like the lid of it hanging there. That's the only remnants of that thing. You know, I don't know. I've drugged the, the stabilizer jacks. I have an issue with them getting stuck because they've drugged the ground before. I had to replace that one time before. 
It's just always been an issue with tire clearance. Now with these modifications, I also did some electrical modifications and so I couldn't keep the spare tire in the front compartment anymore. We're gonna get into all those electrical modifications soon. But also with that, with the 16 inch wheel and the bigger tire, it wouldn't fit in there anyway. And so I did take a little bit of a leap of faith here uh, with the new ground clearance and I did add a BAL high despair under the camper. It's going to be one of our next videos coming up. But even after decreasing the ground clearance with the BAL high despair, I still have 13 inches of clearance underneath the spare tire. Also, there's a ton of difference in the braking, which is huge on safety for me. With the gain turned all the way up before and even the brakes being adjusted by Steve down there at Shelburne RV, they wouldn't lock up. You know, to properly adjust your brakes, you're supposed to go until they lock up and then back off just a little bit. Well, mine would never lock up. They do now. I get some good brakes now and I'm not gonna complain about that one bit. I feel a lot safer even though I don't use the brakes a whole lot because we have the engine brake on the truck. So we're like going down hills and stuff, I hardly ever touch the brake. I don't think I could go without an engine brake anymore. You know, I feel like multiple aspects in this setup are, are safer and I'm just, I couldn't be happier with the way that it turned out. So I'm gonna keep up with it for a little while. I'm gonna give you guys some updates and I'll uh, tell you how it's doing from time to time. But thanks for following the channel. Thanks for watching this week's video and stay tuned for what we got coming up next. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.